I heard about your recent trip, how was it? Hey! I heard about your recent trip. How was it? Oh, it was incredible. We went to this remote island off the coast, and it was like paradise. That sounds amazing. What did you get up to while you were there? We spent most of our time exploring the beaches and snorkeling in the crystal clear waters. It was like stepping into a postcard. Wow, I'm envious. Did you have any standout experiences? Definitely. One day, we hiked up to a hidden waterfall tucked away in the jungle. It was like discovering a secret oasis. That sounds magical. Any challenges along the way? Well, we did encounter some unexpected rainstorms, but it added to the adventure. Plus, we found shelter in cozy beachside cafes. It sounds like a trip filled with unforgettable moments. I'm glad you had such a fantastic time. Thanks. It was truly a trip to remember. Celebrating Achievements How do you like to celebrate your achievements? I believe in marking milestones with meaningful gestures that reflect the significance of the accomplishment. That sounds wonderful. Do you have any favorite ways to celebrate? It depends on the achievement, but I often enjoy celebrating with loved ones, whether it's a small gathering or a special dinner. Celebrating with loved ones adds an extra layer of joy to the occasion. Do you ever treat yourself to something special? Absolutely. I think it's important to acknowledge personal victories and indulge in a little self-care. Whether it's a spa day, a weekend getaway, or simply indulging in a favorite hobby, it's about honoring the effort and dedication that went into reaching the goal. That's a great perspective. Celebrating achievements not only boosts morale, but also serves as a reminder of our capabilities and the importance of setting and pursuing goals. Definitely. It's all about recognizing and appreciating progress, no matter how big or small. Safety Discussion How do you prioritize safety in your daily life? I think it starts with awareness and prevention, being mindful of potential risks and taking proactive measures to mitigate them. That makes sense. Do you have any specific safety practices you follow? Absolutely. I always make sure to lock doors and windows, especially when I'm home alone. And when I'm out and about, I stay alert and avoid risky situations. It's essential to be vigilant, especially in unfamiliar environments. How about when it comes to online safety? That's a great point. With the increasing prevalence of cyber threats, it's crucial to use strong passwords. Be cautious about sharing personal information online and stay up to date on security measures. Agreed. And what about safety in emergencies or natural disasters? Having a well thought out emergency plan and keeping essential supplies on hand can make a big difference. 
It's about being prepared for the unexpected. Definitely. Prioritizing safety in all aspects of life ensures peace of mind and helps prevent accidents or harm. Check in procedures. How do you approach check in procedures when traveling? I like to streamline the process by checking in online whenever possible. It saves time and allows me to choose preferred seats or make special requests in advance. That's efficient. Do you have any tips for making the check in process smoother? I recommend double checking travel documents, such as passports and boarding passes, beforehand to avoid last minute stress. And arriving at the airport with ample time ensures a hassle free experience. Good advice. How about hotel check ins? Similarly, I prefer to check in online or via mobile app if available. It minimizes wait times at the front desk and provides the convenience of bypassing paperwork upon arrival. That sounds convenient. Do you encounter any challenges with online check in? Occasionally, technical glitches or connectivity issues can arise, but they're usually resolved quickly by reaching out to customer service. Overall, the convenience and time saving benefits outweigh any potential drawbacks. It sounds like being proactive and prepared is key to smooth check in procedures during travel. Have a good one. Hey, it's good to see you. Have a seat. It's been a while since we last caught up. Yeah, it really has. Life just seems to keep us busy, doesn't it? Absolutely. So, how have you been? Busy as always, but I can't complain. How about you? Same here. Just trying to keep up with work and everything else. But, Hey, that's life, right? Definitely. By the way, did you hear about the new project our team is working on? No, I haven't. What's it about? It's a collaboration with another department. We're aiming to streamline our processes and improve efficiency. That sounds exciting. I'll have to look into it more. Anyway, I should probably get going. Have a good one. You too. Take care. How's your favorite sports team doing? haven't checked in with you in a while. How's your favorite sports team doing? Thanks for asking. They're actually doing pretty well this season. They had a rough start, but they've been picking up momentum lately. That's great to hear. What do you think turned things around for them? I think it's a combination of factors, really. They've made some strategic changes in their lineup. And the players seem to be really gelling as a team now. Nice teamwork makes all the difference. Have you been able to catch any of their recent games? Yeah, I've been following along whenever I can. It's been exciting to see them come together and play with such intensity. Sounds like they're on the right track. Hopefully, they can keep up the momentum and make a strong push for the playoffs. Fingers crossed. I have a good feeling about this season. Thanks for asking about them.
Wi-Fi access queries. How important is Wi-Fi access to you when choosing accommodations? Wi-Fi access is essential for me, especially when traveling for work or staying connected with family and friends. I prioritize hotels or rentals with reliable and high-speed internet. That's understandable. Do you encounter any challenges with Wi-Fi access during your travels? Sometimes, especially in remote or rural areas. Wi-Fi signals may be weak or unreliable, which can be frustrating. In those cases, I try to plan ahead by downloading important files or maps offline. Good strategy. Do you have any tips for ensuring reliable Wi-Fi access at accommodations? I typically read reviews or contact the property in advance to inquire about their Wi-Fi reliability and speed. Additionally, opting for accommodations with complementary Wi-Fi or business centers can provide peace of mind. That's smart. It sounds like doing some research and planning ahead can help mitigate potential Wi-Fi-related issues during travels. Definitely, reliable Wi-Fi access is a crucial aspect of a comfortable and convenient stay. Let's clear the air. Hey, I think we need to talk about what happened yesterday. Yeah, I agree. Let's clear the air. I felt really hurt. When you didn't invite me to the meeting, I'm sorry about that. It wasn't intentional. The meeting was planned last minute, and I thought you were already busy. I understand things can be rushed, but it felt like I was being excluded on purpose. I can see how it might seem that way. I promise it wasn't. I value your input and want you to be part of these discussions. Thanks for saying that. It means a lot. I just want to make sure we're on the same page moving forward. Absolutely. Communication is key. If something like this happens again, I'll make sure to reach out and clarify. That sounds good. Let's make an effort to keep each other in the loop. Agreed. It's important that we work together smoothly. What's your favorite book? They tell me that I'm never gonna make it. They want me to do something that can make sense. They hate when I keep. What's your favorite book? That's a tough one, but I'd say "To Kill a Mockingbird" by Harper Lee. It's a classic. How about you? For me, it's 1984 by George Orwell. It really makes you think about society and personal freedom. 1984 is a great pick. It's incredibly relevant, isn't it? What is it that draws you to that book? I think it's the way Orwell explores themes of control and resistance. It's both disturbing and enlightening. Absolutely, and to kill a mockingbird deals with its own form of resistance against injustice. What aspect of it stands out to you? The moral clarity of the characters, especially Atticus Finch. His integrity in the face of social pressures is inspiring. He's an unforgettable character. Have you read any similar books that impacted you like that? The Grapes of Wrath by Steinbeck also left a strong impression. It depicts resilience in the face of hardship really well. That's another fantastic book. 
Steinbeck has a way of capturing the human spirit. It's impressive how books can influence our views and feelings. Yes, they open up new worlds and perspectives. What's another book that's had a big impact on you? The Road by Cormac McCarthy. It's bleak but beautifully written about the bond between father and son. I'm so touched by your words. Hey, I saw the presentation you gave yesterday. It was fantastic. Thanks. I was really nervous about it. You couldn't tell at all. Your delivery was so smooth and confident. I appreciate that. I spent a lot of time preparing. It really showed. You made some great points about the project's impact on the community. I'm glad you think so. I just wanted to make sure everyone understood its importance. You did an excellent job. Honestly, your dedication to this project is inspiring. Wow, I'm so touched by your words. It means a lot to hear that. You deserve it. You've put in so much effort, and it's paying off. Thank you. It's been a challenging journey, but feedback like this makes it worthwhile. Keep up the great work. You're making a real difference. Thanks, I will. By the way, are you free this weekend? I was thinking of organizing a small celebration for the team. That sounds like a great idea. Count me in. It's nice to see you. Hey, it's nice to see you. Likewise. It feels like ages since we last caught up. I know, right? Life just seems to fly by sometimes. Absolutely. But it's always a pleasant surprise to run into old friends amidst the chaos. Couldn't agree more. So, what have you been up to lately? Oh, you know the usual grind. Work, errands, trying to squeeze in some downtime when I can. Sounds familiar. I've been on a bit of a roller coaster myself. But, hey, that's life, right? Indeed. You peas. And downs, twists and turns, it's all part of the journey. True words. Well, I'm glad our paths crossed today. It's a nice break from the routine. Absolutely. Let's make sure it's not another eternity until the next catch up, shall we? Agreed. Until next time. What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal? I really love elephants. They're just majestic and so intelligent. How about you? I'm partial to dogs. They're such loyal and joyful companions. Dogs are great. What is it about elephants that you like so much? Their memory and social structures are fascinating. They can remember other elephants and humans for years and their emotional depth is incredible. That is really amazing. I've read that they mourn their dead, which is pretty profound. Exactly. It shows how complex they are. And dogs, they're always so happy to see you, no matter what kind of day you've had. True. 
Their unconditional love is something special. Do you have a dog? Yes, I have a golden retriever named Max. He's a bundle of energy. Do you have any pets? I don't currently, but I grew up with a cat. I'd love to have a pet elephant, though if it were practical. That would be something. For now, visiting them in sanctuaries will have to do. Definitely. It's the best way to appreciate them responsibly. Concierge assistance. How often do you utilize concierge assistance when staying at a hotel? I find concierge services quite helpful, especially when I need recommendations for local attractions, restaurants, or arranging transportation. That's convenient. Do you have any memorable experiences with concierges providing exceptional assistance? Yes, on several occasions, concierges have gone above and beyond to secure last-minute reservations at popular restaurants or arrange unique experiences like guided tours or tickets to shows. Impressive. How do you approach requesting assistance from the concierge? I typically provide specific details about what I'm looking for, such as preferred cuisines, budget, or interests to help them tailor recommendations to my preferences. That makes sense. Have you ever encountered any limitations with concierge services? Sometimes, especially during peak tourist seasons, there may be longer wait times or limited availability for certain services. However, overall, I've found concierges to be valuable resources for enhancing my travel experiences. It sounds like leveraging concierge assistance can greatly enhance the enjoyment and convenience of hotel stays. Do you have any available rooms for tonight? Do you have any available rooms for tonight? Yes, we do. How many guests will be staying? Just me, for one night. All right. Let me check our inventory. Yes, we have a single room available. Great. What's the rate for tonight? The rate for our single room starts at $100 per night. Sounds good. Can I book it now? Absolutely. Can I have your name for the reservation? It's Sarah Johnson. And would you like to provide a contact number? Sure, it's 555 to 5555. Perfect. Your reservation for a single room tonight under the name Sarah Johnson is confirmed. Check-in time is from 3 o'clock p.m. onwards. Thank you. I'll be there around 4 o'clock p.m. We'll see you then, Miss Johnson. If you need anything else, feel free to ask. Setting boundaries. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm Have you ever had to set boundaries with someone in your life? Absolutely. Boundaries are essential for maintaining healthy relationships and protecting our own well-being. It's crucial to communicate our needs and limits clearly. Definitely. But sometimes... It can be challenging to assert boundaries without feeling guilty or causing conflict. That's true. But ultimately, 
Setting boundaries is about respecting ourselves and others. It's about finding a balance between being compassionate and assertive. I agree. And it's important to remember that boundaries can evolve over time. What worked for us in the past might not be effective anymore, and that's okay. Exactly. As we grow and change, our boundaries may need to adjust accordingly. And it's okay to reassess and communicate those changes as needed. Absolutely. At the end of the day, setting boundaries is about taking care of ourselves and fostering healthy relationships built on mutual respect and understanding. Let's keep the momentum going. I can't believe we managed to raise all that money at the fundraiser last night. I know, right? It was an incredible turnout. Let's keep the momentum going. Absolutely. With this kind of support, we can really expand our outreach programs. I was thinking the same thing. We should start planning the next event while the excitement is still high. Agreed. Maybe we could organize a community cleanup day next month. That's a great idea. It's hands on and gets people directly involved. Plus, it'll give us another chance to spread the word about our cause. Exactly. And we can use social media to keep everyone updated and engaged. Yes, we should definitely post photos. And stories from last night's event. I'll handle that. We've got some great shots that will inspire more people to join us. Perfect. Let's set up a meeting with the team to brainstorm more ideas. Sounds good. We've got a lot of positive energy right now. Restaurant Recommendations How do you go about finding restaurant recommendations when visiting a new place? I like to research online reviews and recommendations from trusted sources like food bloggers, travel websites, or locals. It helps narrow down options and ensures a memorable dining experience. That's a smart approach. Do you have any favorite types of cuisine to explore? I enjoy exploring diverse cuisines, from authentic local fare to international dishes. It's all about experiencing the flavors and culinary traditions of different cultures. Sounds delicious. Have you ever had any standout dining experiences based on recommendations? Yes, definitely. Discovering hidden gems or trying renowned eateries based on recommendations has led to some unforgettable dining experiences. It's like uncovering culinary treasures in each new destination. Impressive. It sounds like thorough research pays off in finding exceptional dining options, wherever you go. Absolutely. With a little research and some insider tips, dining out becomes a highlight of any travel experience. How's life treating you? Hey, long time no see. How's life treating you? Life's been a whirlwind, honestly. Work's been consuming most of my time lately. 
but I can't complain. It keeps me on my toes. How about you? I hear you on the work front. It's been quite the juggling act for me, too. Between deadlines and meetings, it feels like time just slips away. But hey, at least it's keeping us sharp, right? Absolutely. Staying sharp is the name of the game. Besides work, though, life's been throwing some interesting curveballs my way. Been trying to find that balance. You know? How about you? Any curveballs on your end? Oh, you bet! Life has this funny way of keeping us on our toes. But hey, we're still standing, right? Here's to navigating through the twists and turns. Cheers to that. We'll weather the storms and come out stronger on the other side. That's a tall order. Have you seen the latest project brief from the boss? Yeah, I just looked it over. It's pretty ambitious. Don't you think? Definitely. Organizing a conference for 500 people in just two weeks. That's a tall order. No kidding. We'll need to coordinate the venue. Speakers, catering, and marketing. It's going to be a massive effort. And on top of that, we need to make sure the event runs smoothly without any hiccups. I'm already feeling the pressure. Same here. But if we split the tasks and get the team involved, we might just pull it off. Good point. I'll handle the venue and catering. Can you take care of contacting the speakers and arranging the schedule? Sure thing. I'll start reaching out to the speakers right away. We'll also need to create a solid promotional plan. Yes, I'll talk to the marketing team about that. It's going to be tight, but we've pulled off challenging projects before. True. If we stay focused and work together, we can do this. Absolutely. Let's get started. How are you? How are you? I'm good, thanks. How about you? Doing all right. Anything new? Not much, just the usual. How's work going? It's been busy, but nothing I can't handle. How about you? Any exciting projects? Not really, just plugging away at the same stuff. Trying to stay motivated, you know? Yeah, I hear you. Sometimes it's tough to keep the momentum going. Definitely. So, any plans for the weekend? Not much. Probably just relaxing at home. What about you? Same here. Maybe catch up on some reading or binge watch a series. Sounds like a plan. Well, I should probably get back to work. Talk to you later. Sure thing. Take care. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite color? I've always liked blue. It's so calming and reminds me of the ocean. What's yours? I'm a fan of green. It makes me think of nature. 
like forests and fields. Green is a great choice. Do you like to spend a lot of time outdoors? Yes, definitely. I try to get outside as much as I can. Hiking, gardening, you name it. Does blue have a special meaning for you? It does, actually. My father was a sailor, so I grew up loving the sea and the sky. Anything blue just feels like home to me. That's really beautiful. It's interesting how our favorite colors can say so much about us. Absolutely. They often reflect our personalities or our memories. Do you associate green with any specific memories? Yes, my grandmother used to have a big garden. I spent a lot of time there as a kid. It was always so peaceful and full of life. Sounds like a wonderful place to grow up. Colors really do connect us to our past. They do. It's like a visual piece of our history. That's a voice of reason. Hey, have you heard about the new coffee shop that opened downtown? Yeah. I walked by it yesterday. It looks pretty cozy. I was thinking of checking it out this weekend. Do you want to join me? Sure, I could use a break. I've been swamped with work lately. Same here. I could really use some time to unwind. Plus, I heard they have amazing pastries. That sounds perfect. By the way, did you finish the project we were working on? Almost. I just need to finalize a few details. How about you? I'm done. Just waiting on your part to complete it. No rush, though. It's better to get it right than to rush and make mistakes. That's a voice of reason. I'll make sure it's perfect before sending it over. Great. So what time should we meet at the coffee shop? How about 10 a.m. on Saturday? Sounds good to me. See you then. Looking forward to it. Billing and payment inquiries. How do you typically handle billing and payment inquiries when dealing with services or purchases? I make sure to review invoices or receipts carefully to ensure accuracy and verify that charges align with the agreed upon terms or prices. That's prudent. Do you encounter any challenges with billing discrepancies? Occasionally. There may be errors or unexpected charges that require clarification. In those cases, I reach out to customer service or the billing department to resolve the issue promptly. Good approach. How do you prefer to make payments for services or purchases? I usually opt for secure payment methods like credit cards or online platforms that offer fraud protection and convenient payment options. It provides peace of mind and simplifies the payment process. It sounds like being vigilant and proactive in managing billing and payments is crucial for financial security and transparency. Definitely. Clear communication and attention to detail help ensure smooth transactions and avoid potential disputes. Transportation Arrangements How do you typically arrange transportation? 
When traveling to a new destination, I like to research transportation options in advance, considering factors like cost, convenience, and reliability. Depending on the location, I may opt for public transportation, ride-sharing services, or rental cars. That's a practical approach. Do you find that certain transportation methods work better in specific destinations? Definitely. In densely populated cities with well-developed public transit systems, like New York or Tokyo, public transportation is often the most efficient way to get around. However, in more rural or remote areas, rental cars may offer more flexibility and accessibility. Good point. How about airport transfers or getting to accommodations from the airport? For airport transfers, I usually arrange transportation in advance, either through the hotel's shuttle service, ride-sharing apps, or private car services. It ensures a smooth transition from the airport to my accommodation without any hassle. It sounds like careful planning and consideration of transportation options can greatly enhance the travel experience. Absolutely. Choosing the right transportation method can make a significant difference in exploring new destinations comfortably and efficiently. Let's pull out all the stops. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it. Did you hear about the annual charity event coming up? Yes, I did. Are you planning to get involved? Absolutely. I was thinking we could organize a booth this year. That's a great idea. What kind of booth? I was thinking of setting up a games. An activities booth to raise funds. That sounds fun. We could have different games for all age groups. Exactly. We could also offer small prizes to make it more engaging. I love it. Let's pull out all the stops and make it the best booth at the event. Agreed. We'll need to start planning right away to get everything ready. I can handle the games and activities part. Can you take care of the decorations and prizes? Sure thing. I'll also reach out to some local businesses for sponsorship. Great. With both of us working on this, it's going to be amazing. I'm excited already. This is going to be so much fun. Same here. Let's make it a day to remember. Can you recommend a good hotel in the area? Can you recommend a good hotel in the area? Sure. There's a really nice one called the Lakeside Inn just a few blocks away. Oh. I've heard about that one. Is it expensive? It's reasonably priced for the quality you get. Plus, they have some great amenities like a pool and a fitness center. Sounds perfect. Is it easy to get to from here? Yeah, it's just a short drive. Or a brisk walk if you're up for it. Excellent! I'll check it out. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. I hope you enjoy your stay there. Me too. I've been needing a little getaway. Well, the Lakeside Inn should provide the perfect escape for you. Let me know if you need any more info. Will do. Thanks again. Let's not jump to conclusions.
don't wanna sleep in Cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally Did you see the email from management? It sounds like they're planning some big changes. Yes, I saw it. I'm worried. They might be cutting some positions. Let's not jump to conclusions. The email was pretty vague. It could mean a lot of things. You're right. But with all the rumors going around, it's hard not to think the worst. I know what you mean. But until we get more information, we should stay calm. Good point. Speculating won't do us any good. We should wait for the official announcement. Exactly! In the meantime, let's focus on our current projects. If we keep showing our value, it can only help. True. And if there are changes, we'll adapt and find a way to move forward. That's the spirit. We faced challenges before and come out stronger. Absolutely. Let's just stay positive and see what happens. Agreed. We'll handle whatever comes our way, together. Right. Thanks for the reassurance. It's easy to get carried away with worry. What's the weather like today? Hey, what's the weather like today? It's actually pretty pleasant. The sun is shining, and there's a gentle breeze blowing. It feels like the perfect spring day. That sounds lovely. I've been craving some time outdoors. Do you think it's warm enough for a picnic? Definitely. I checked the forecast, and it's supposed to stay mild throughout the day. A picnic sounds like a fantastic idea. Great. I'll start packing some snacks and drinks. Any suggestions for a good spot? How about the park by the lake? It's usually quiet this time of day, and the view is stunning. Sounds perfect. I'll meet you there in about an hour. Sounds like a plan. Don't forget to bring a blanket. Will do. See you soon. Bedtime chat. Hey, do you ever find yourself pondering the mysteries of the universe before drifting off to sleep? Absolutely. It's like the stillness of the night opens the floodgates of contemplation. I often wonder about the vastness of space, the possibility of other intelligent life forms out there. Right? And then there's the concept of time itself. Is it linear or cyclical? Sometimes I find myself lost in thought about the nature of existence. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? And what about dreams? Are they just random firings of neurons, or do they hold deeper meanings? I've read about theories suggesting that dreams are a way for our subconscious to process emotions and experiences. Fascinating stuff. Definitely. And then there's the age-old question, what happens after we die? It's a topic that never fails to spark introspection. True. It's like bedtime becomes this portal to exploring the mysteries of life and the cosmos. Have you been on any vacations recently? Have you been on any vacations recently? Yes, I just got back from a week in Iceland. It was incredible. Have you traveled anywhere lately? Not recently, but hearing about Iceland sounds fascinating. What was the highlight of your trip? Definitely seeing the Northern Lights. 
It was surreal, like watching vibrant colors dance across the sky. What's the best vacation you've ever had? My trip to Japan was unforgettable. The culture, the food, the historic sites, it was a whole new world for me. Japan sounds amazing. I'd love to go there someday. Did you pick up any Japanese while you were there? A little bit. Just enough to navigate the subway and order at restaurants. How about you? Did you manage to learn some Icelandic phrases? A few basics, yes. It's a challenging language, but the locals appreciated the effort. Are you planning any trips for the near future? I'm thinking about a road trip across the U.S. next summer. Always wanted to see the national parks. That would be an epic journey. The national parks are such treasures. Safe travels when you go. Do you have any siblings? Living life every day, late at night, not okay. All I want and I pray, all I need are some better days. Fuck me, I'm looking in the mirror, so fuck. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have one older sister. How about you? I'm an only child. What's it like having a sister? It's great most of the time. We're really close now, but we definitely had our moments growing up. I can imagine. I sometimes wonder what it would have been like to have a brother. Or sister. It has its perks. Like always having someone to talk to. Or hang out with. That sounds nice. Does your sister live nearby? She moved across the country a few years ago for her job. But we keep in touch a lot. And visit when we can. That must be tough. Being so far apart. It is. But we manage. Do you ever feel lonely being an only child? Sometimes. But I had a lot of cousins around growing up. So that helped. Family connections really do make a difference. They really do. So, does your sister come back home often? She tries to make it for the holidays. At least. It's always a special time when she does.